What's up guys, welcome back to the channel here at Blown Diff Off-Road. We got another one. What's up Josh? Hey guys. <laughs> so, the, I'm just, uh, got the rig up on the lift, draining the oil out of her. As you can see. Spicy. That's not healthy. Got some signs of foul play. But we're going to get this diff pulled out of here today and uh, I'm still waiting on some more parts so I can complete this project but I know this diff's not good so I'm going to get it pulled out and tear it down and see what broke on the, on the welded diff and show you guys what broke originally. Hopefully I can show you guys what originally broke with the spider gears. So let's start tearing into it. Jesus. <laughs> Who put that there? Action. So, uh, we're out here tearing down the Can Am. Um, started this video a couple minutes ago, I don't really remember what I said, but if you guys didn't stay up to date in the whole Windrock series, um, I blew the Smart Lock diff on this um, on day two, I believe, on Trail 39, going up Cadillac Hill on one of the, you know, one of the main lines, like the nasty line, going up Cadillac Hill. Blew it on that. It wasn't really that hard of a hit looking back in the video, in my opinion, but it has had a hard life, I guess. I mean, you guys see how we ride, you know, we hit the hard stuff, but I do like to think that I have pretty decent throttle control, but all that set aside, it's not a true lock diff, even when it wasn't broke. So um, if it was like a true lock diff, it probably would have played into my opinion on which way I was going to go to fix this. But um, the fact that I want four wheel drive, you know, when I hit the four wheel drive button was a big part of the role. So um, blew the spider gears the first, the first time it broke and then we pulled the diff apart, split the cases and welded the spider gears, which we didn't really show any of that. Um, it was just kind of time crunch, frustration, you know, trying to get it back together and got the spider gears welded, put it back in and actually broke. I don't know what yet, but we will show you guys and broke something inside the diff. Obviously, I think it was the welds or this, another spider gear, something disintegrated inside of there. So it was actually just pulling three wheel drive. Um, so something with, you know, the output on this side went and broke, but. Some of the welds worked. Yeah, some of the welds worked because when the smart lock broke, it was just barely even three wheel drive. It was mostly two wheel drive. The front diff like wouldn't really lock together. And when the welds broke, it was like stuck in <laughs> three wheel drive. So it's yeah. better than, Two wheel. It was the same side too that was stripped. Like completely. and you yeah. so did no rail bed. Left. Yeah, no. Is that the trail we did? Yeah, yeah. you did rail bed and three wheel drive yeah, and I winched remember. one time. Yeah, it was pretty much a eat, but we didn't get much film from that trail. It was kind of burnt out on the old camera. But um, anyways, we're back again. We got the fix over here for you guys. Stretch home. Big Bahala. Oh wait, nope, oh, nope. Oh. Just ta da. So, you want to know what this equates to? Fall out. Just, just you're gonna need all, a lot all more of that. those. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> um, but, anyways, guys, went with a Halo, Halo diff, full billet, Halo 30. Um, it's basically the only option. You know, a lot of people are telling me to run, like, oh, get a torque locker or a Halo locker, but you can't do that with a smart lock diff. You'd have to go old school, get a Visco diff, and then put a different locker in it. So, which is not the right direction to go. No, because, because then I'd have to actually get different axles, which I have to have for this too, but then I'd have to have smaller axles. And it's just not the, it's almost like going down with a little bit up, I don't know. The guy we know. To end up here eventually. Ended yeah, up here probably. and right. traveled that same route. Right, so I just, 
You know, a new smart lock is about $800 to $1,000, $1,300 if you find one new. Um, which, buying a used one's kind of scary to begin with because you guys seen what my used one was doing. You guys see what Ethan's used one was doing, the, the blue RC that rides with us. I mean, they slip, you know, it's not true lock. It was better, I'd say, in the beginning of my rig. It still did it, but it seemed like it was getting worse and worse. Yeah, aggressively. So it's like buying a used one, who knows how worn out it already is. Ethan seemed like his clutch pack in his diff was slipped easier. Yeah. Because you just stripped out all of the teeth on the one spider. Yeah, but even mine was spinning, slipping a lot. I don't so. know. But anyways, I don't want to go down that route, so I just decided to send it and get a Halo 30. And uh, this diff is three grand for anybody that's wondering. Um, but like I said, the smart lock is about a grand if you're gonna go back that route. The only downside to this now is then you've gotta run big axles. So the output on them is 33 spline output. So you can't run stock axles anymore. You've gotta run either turners or RCVs is basically the only, uh, the only axle that works with it as far as I know. But I don't know, just off hurt once, what do they, what do they buy once, cry once or yeah, something? Yeah, buy once, cry once. So you can also yes. buy RCVs for the Visco lock or the Smart lock, yeah. and then you can change the cups to the inside cups, diff side, to whatever, if you went Visco lock, you could go to Smart lock, change right, the so cups, if, if and then you could go. If you guys are already Smart lock and you're breaking front axles, you can buy RCVs, and still all you'd have to change is the part that goes into the diff, but. So if you wanted to chip at it, and still have good parts, you know, pick your poison on the route you want to go. If you just want to ball out and do it all at once or right. pick at it, you can. So for a little bit of backstory on what, uh, if you guys don't know much about the Halo 30 is, it's a true locking diff with an electronic locker inside of it. So just like, you know, a car, automotive, truck, Jeep, like it's an actual locker. It doesn't use anything, any electric magnetic crap to lock the diff together it's just locked you know it electronically locks the diff but that's it so you have three options um from what i understand but now i'm confused it'd be like a, it'd be like a rubicon like jeep so the rubicon jeep has four-wheel drive open diff and then you can flip a switch to lock it same theory so it's an open diff when he uses normal four-wheel drive and then that switch he has in his hand makes it full locked and that's locked so locked. which i think you kind of just said but from what i understand is you'll use the stock switch to to engage the drive shaft so that puts you into four wheel drive and if you leave this switch down that's going to be like an open front diff so you know it'll spin one of the two tires so if you're like on a racetrack or hitting something you don't you know just like normal trail riding yeah. and you need four wheel drive it's muddy or whatever that's what you'd leave it in. And then from what I understand, you hit this and then it's fully locked, like. Switch is kind of neat, by the way. I believe it's spider gears on the switch. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like a picture of spider gears <laughs> that get locked together. So, kind of cool. That's the thing that's cool about the Can-Am too that's different than mine, I believe, is the trans actually locks yeah. the diff in. And I know why so that's this can work. And I know YXZ's was a similar kind of issue, I'll call it, like, the four-wheel drive is actuated in the diff. Yeah. So, like, it kind of makes it a struggle to do different diffs and things like that, because you can't just unlock it with a flip of the switch. So then the trans isn't controlling it, it's in the diff, you know what I mean? So, kind of cool that you're able to, like, that's probably one of the biggest reasons I chose Can-Am, is I wanted an option to build it. Like, this was my intentions from day one. I'm like, if, if I buy a can and I build a smart lock, I was really hoping not to, but I kind of, I had the money set aside from the beginning because I, I kind of had a thought that I'd be down this road one day. I didn't think it'd be this soon. I thought it would be if I went 35s, but here we are on 32s. The stock axles, stock drive shaft. <laughs> <laughs> you do the math, it doesn't add up, but we're down this road now. Um, my axles aren't in. <clears throat> my axles aren't in yet, but figured I'd tear it down and get that diff out. Put this diff in. Tear that diff down. Show you guys what happened. But a little bit of um, what we did to get to this point. So this is running CT Racing lower arms. 
um, the CT Racing full gusset kit, which is like uh, these braces going across here, this brace like through here. So I wasn't sure if I could get this diff out, still not sure, 100%, if I get this diff out and that diff in without pulling all of this apart. So, so far I've just pulled the axle out, unhooked the shock, I mean you see all this stuff strapped up. So just your typical pull the axle apart. Um, just push the lower A-arms down to get them out of the way. And then pull the upper A-arms off um, just so I can get this gusset kit out. So as you can see here, you know, there's not much clearance and that diff is a lot bigger. So hopefully it all fits together with this gusset kit, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, but we'll be sure to show you guys. So at this point, we've got both upper A-arms off, axles out, and we're just going to pull the drive shaft off, just slide it back. Loosen the diff bolts, get this gusset kit off, get this diff yanked out of here, and then hopefully we can get the halo in and get the gusset kit back over and around the halo, and then uh, tear this diff down. And we'll show you guys along the way, and we'll definitely show you guys the carnage inside of this diff, so stay tuned. All right guys, so we got this gusset kit pulled out of here. It's just this brace that goes here and then it comes up and over the top of the diff and gussets over to that spot right there that you can see. And those are actually the upper A-arm bolts that you can pull out through here. So without pulling any of this stuff apart, you can get the A-arms off even with a gusset kit. So pretty cool um, to know that. Yeah, I don't think you can pull the bottom A-arms off though with leaving all this together because as you can see here, you'd have to pull this plate off and this is a stud. So I don't believe you could get that stud to go that way. Is that correct anybody, Billy? Do you know? I don't think that goes that way. No, I don't think so. So in order to get the lower arms off, I believe you'd have to pull the front bumper and the front winch mount and all that stuff off. But for this job, you don't need to do any of that, so it's cool. Uh, just something I wanted to mention. But as you guys can see, got plenty of room up in here now. Should be able to just pull the drive shaft off pull the diff bolts and get this thing yanked out of here. All right, so we got the uh, drive shaft pulled off. Uh, got all the connections unplugged, the vent line right there. So the bolts out the bottom, drain the fluid when the video started. So hopefully we can just yank this thing out of here. I don't know which way it goes, but we'll figure it out. All right guys, so, so far, we think it's gonna go like this. Um, tipped it, driver's side got it laid horizontally and uh, hopefully it comes out like this. <laughs> you think it's gotta go to your Billy? Yeah. Still like that? Yeah. Look at that. Tip it to uh, bring it back. Now I'm doing it towards you. Hey, <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Thing Still sucks. <laughs> she looks spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, no. I'm nervous for, for the fitment of that whole, that halo up in this unit. But we'll get in there and see how she looks. All right, guys. So we got the diff pulled out and pulled it, uh, pulled it apart, got the carrier out, like the, the whole assembly basically. And we threw two axles in it. And so if you look at this, it's actually welded. So in here, you'd normally see your spider gears. And that's where you've seen, that's where when, we, when I first broke it, it stripped one of those spider gears completely. So there was nothing for the axle to grab. And at this point, when it's welded, this axle should spin with that one like at all times. So we can't see any noticeable carnage because something obviously broke one of the welds or more of the teeth like just disintegrated something obviously broke underneath like this weld so unfortunately we can't really show you guys but it does kind of bind up once <laughs> in a while but can't really show you guys what it uh what it broke this time but when it originally broke like i said it was a spider gear in those so if you're curious on what these axles actually look like or what this diff actually looks like and if you could weld it, because I've seen some people were curious, like this is what size hole you're working with. And it's a little bit smaller than like a quarter, I'll say. Yeah, probably. Like the coin, a quarter. 
a little bit smaller than that, and the spider gears were in there about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, like, down. So it's kind of hard to get, like, good penetration with a MIG welder anyways. Maybe with a stick welder you could really get some heat in there, and uh, maybe do some damage and, and hope to have a better outcome than I had. Obviously it didn't work out for me, but just kind of wanted to show you guys. But I think we're going to pull apart the actual actuator and show you guys how the diff lock works. Because I know um, it was something that we were super curious on, and I know a lot of people are super curious on how that actually works. So. Yeah, with like the clutching and stuff. Yeah. Which is, and there was more Carnage. issues in yeah. there that we, we wouldn't have really expected. So we'll break that down quick for you guys, and we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, so we got the... The carrier just kind of chilling back in there, just so we could show you guys. So we pull this, you pull, if you're trying to tear it down like we are, or you're wondering, <laughs> or you're wondering the, like how this diff works, pull this case off and you'll see this on this side. Yep. And that whole carrier will come out this way. Um, so this is what we showed you before with the welded spiders. So that's where your spiders are, are inside of there. So. Nothing too much to see here really, other than like just keep note of these two like spline shafts. And they spline into, you know, on the outer and the inner there. So now we'll pull the other side apart and show you guys that. So once you flip it over, so you got your actuator, which is literally just a gear. So keep this in mind, this is the smart diff here. So <laughs> we got one gear that controls the smart diff. So. so we'll show you guys this piece first. Um, this one? Yeah, so this is what gets actuated. So you can see here there's like the splines on this and that actuator teeth, like so, those teeth go through there and they, they actually rotate this so pull that spring off right there and this rotates so you guys aren't going to be able to really see this i doubt i guess you can see see this gap watch right watch right there and as you rotate it it raises up you know not maybe a sixteenth of an inch or something like that like it raises up a tiny bit so that's when you engage the diff into your different modes so we're not 100% sure on this, but it's the only thing that makes sense to me is that the different modes as far as like trail or trail active or diff lock is just how much this rotates because it's really the only thing that they can control from what I understand, right? Yeah, I think so. So, you know, obviously we're no experts, but there's no videos on this tearing this actual down and showing how it works. So we're showing you guys what we've learned and what we can see. So it seems like the different modes, it's just how far this rotates, which in, in relation, then you go over here and that plate is usually flipped up and is resting on here. Uh, there is one thing maybe we missed. If this is like a speed sensor. Okay, yeah, right. So I could see maybe the computer then trying to tell this gear, you know, maybe it needs a little more pressure yeah. to lock a certain wheel. So that... But uh, this can't lock a certain wheel. Like it can't no yeah it, it doesn't know it's just but if it i think i think it just it it needs it to be locked I yeah guess, if that's us because it kind of looks like yeah it is it supposedly monitors that so from what i would assume is that you know if it sense you know like slippage here it would just move this more to lock the diff more in theory you know like yeah that that's what that's how my head understands it, you We're know. No experts here. <laughs> no, so I'm sure one of you guys is gonna roast us in the comments because you know it all. But I mean, <laughs> everybody knows it all, you know. But uh, there's a lot of people that have no idea, like ourselves. Before we pull this apart, I've done a lot of research trying to find out how this thing locks, and little to no info on that. But anyways, so then this plate rides on this like bearing ring thing. And if you pull that off, so then as you, you know, like we said, as this rotates, it basically puts more pressure on this little ring. And when in return, what that does is these are a bunch of, I guess, clutch plates, I'll call them. Yeah. That's basically a pack in there. So we had it out already and we left a few of them out. So it's just, it's just a bunch of these. 
spec yeah, out no and real we, friction or anything either. They're no, and just granted this this one was probably smoked, so I don't know what they're supposed to look <laughs> like, but they don't have like any sure signs of heat or anything on them. Um, but it definitely didn't lock up very well when it was when it broke. Um, but something else to notice is on this whole setup, mine was cracked and broke. This ring was cracked. So I mean, I don't know how that stuff happens, you know, and the broken spider gear, like all at the same time, but that whole clutch pack does pull out. So when I was saying, keep in mind to the splines from the carrier, that's what splines into this piece. Yep. So basically it's just using force on these clutch packs to lock the diff. So to everyone out there saying that this is a true lock diff, I mean, it's not. It still uses clutch discs. Ron. <laughs> it still uses clutch discs to engage it. So, um, there's... Yeah, so it's like this in there. Right, and then your axles go in each one of those holes. Yep. And then it's all oh about God. how much pressure is, is put on these clutch plates, and that's what locks the diff. So when you're spinning your three-wheel drive for all the Can-Am guys, you know, like myself, when you hit, you get in like a, a bind or whatever, and it is spinning three tires, not the fourth. Uh, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, all you're doing right there is slipping these clutch plates. I mean, you'd agree, right? I agree, yeah. So, um, just wanted to... It does seem, though, like if you're not, like if you're just crawling around and you don't ride as hard as us, maybe, you know, just a normal trail rider and you've got you know, 1,500, 2,000 miles and maybe it's worn out. I mean, it doesn't seem like it'd be bad to just replace that. No, If it the wouldn't. rest of your diff is good, obviously he stripped and broke everything in here. <laughs> I mean, the spider gears were all stripped and this is cracked, which yeah. we didn't know until we pulled it apart. You know, who knows how long it could have been cracked. Right, so I mean, that could have been playing into like it not locking up as well or something like that. Yeah. Who yeah. knows, really? Nobody knows like, at this point. But um, that's the gist of it, guys and we just wanted to show you guys this but let me know down below like did your guys is i know there's a lot of can guys that watch this but did your guys just start off strong and lock up better in the beginning and then slowly gradually as you wheel get looser and looser like open up more and more like it's wearing the clutch pack down um, that was our theory from the beginning but we never knew exactly how it worked because it wasn't breaking every time it would stop spinning it was just slipping and then it would be fine so yeah, you basically have to like let out, like let the torque off yep. and then come back and it would be as And it would okay, like rebind, yeah, yeah. like finds a different spot like on the, like the clutch disc or I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting system. I don't, I mean, we're just going straight to old school. But. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's interesting, no doubt. But so that's the carnage. I don't know if I finished saying it, but yeah, let us know if yours you know, slowly but surely over time got worse and worse. Because if that's the case, what I was going to say is like, maybe you could get away with just rebuilding your clutch pack. I'm sure it's not that much money in the grand scheme of, you know, what it costs. It was like 200 bucks. Was I it? we looked at it. Looked at it okay. on Rocky Mountain, I believe. Oh yeah, like, it was. This it clutch was, pack yeah. was 200 bucks. So yeah, I looked, at, <laughs> I looked that up before we went to Windrock because yeah. I had, you know, had some thoughts that the old clutch pack that I didn't even know existed was going bad. So we looked it up on Rocky Mountain, but... You guys might be able to get away with doing that hopefully this video helped you guys out a little bit um but we got the halo thrown in the rig here that actually fit up in there very nice super simple it also worked with the ct gas i hit yeah i was wondering Perfect. yeah yeah we've seen yeah we've seen posts about that as well um like what gusset kits the halo 30 works with because it is pretty pretty big um, so I can't say which ones it does and doesn't work with, but I know it works with the CT Racework, Raceworks gusset kit. And uh, so that's super cool. Uh, slight concern there <laughs> when I ordered all this, but we should be good here. Um, another thing to keep in mind, uh, hopefully maybe helps one of you guys out, is that if you think you're going to break your diff and you're going to want to upgrade to a Halo 30, they are a pretty, pretty far out lead time. So I mean, I figure that's something to mention because I don't think a lot of people really realize that. I didn't really realize it, but they're, you know, four to eight weeks. And I think it all depends on like, you know, when, like right now they were, I think four to six weeks out on the Halo 30, as well as um, RCV axles were that far out. I believe turners were like two days. So just something to keep in mind. 
Um, I happened to get lucky and find this one on a shelf somewhere um, that was a, a canceled KOH build. So I got super lucky there, but just something to keep in mind. If you guys are thinking about doing it and you got the money set aside, if you think you're going to break, um, you know, it might save you some time, some downtime on the trail if you order it ahead of time. But I don't know. And save you the grief of losing half a trip. Yeah, I mean, that's that the biggest sucks. thing, right? It's, if, it's, you know, we travel so far, you know, we're from Wisconsin, it's, it's a foot of snow out there right now. Yeah. And you guys see the lovely winter wonderland that we live in. I think, I think Tennessee got more snow than us though, so <laughs> tough break for you guys, but. Yeah, but ours will be here for, for a good while now. It's like 30 outside. Yeah, so. but I mean, we don't, we're not close, you know, it's not in our backyard. So when we go on a trip, we want to ride and do as much riding as we can. And when this stuff happens, you know, it's a bummer for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. Hopefully this stuff helped you out guys. Um, probably gonna get the machine thrown together a little bit more here. All right guys, so we got the, the halo installed and uh, just wired it up now. It comes with its own little wiring harness, um, its own switch, which I think we showed you guys already, but that's basically just a diff lock switch. So um, you eliminate the, the trail or trail active or rock or mud or whatever version switch you have and uh, you put this one in its place and then you just wire it up to a keyed ignition um, power 12 volts and a ground. Super simple, and it runs back to its own connector and plugs into the actuator. So that's all there is for wiring. Um, I just tapped into, you know, some keyed power I already had up here. And then, so then this button, the stock four-wheel drive switch, you just click it in four-wheel drive, and that'll be um, like an open front diff four-wheel drive. And then you click this one up, and it'll be true diff lock. So I just wanted to mention the wiring quick, because it was kind of a... Um, a gray area that I was wondering on uh, just it, you know you don't see too much about it but figured I'd mention it and then one other thing I want to show you guys up front and uh, and that's only if you're coming from a smart lock machine um, I'm pretty sure the I'm not positive how the switching would work for a visco lock can am um, but this is smart lock so I'm sure you just use the same stock four-wheel drive switch and then you just throw this diff lock one in its in next to it and you'd be good to go but um, I want to show you something about the the wheel speed sensors. So over here we got my stock smart lock diff. And you can see um, I've got the wheel speed sensors pulled out of it. So you put those, um, you just plug those back into the harness on the machine. And then supposedly the computer will see that, see those, and then you shouldn't have to get anything tuned or anything. And that's that's coming straight from Kelly Manning, which is the owner of Halo, um, Halo Discs from what I understand. And all, if you have an issue with it running the way I am, then you can um, take it to a dealer or if, you have, or if anyone has the bud system, you can just turn off smart lock in that. I have heard people say that like with tuning, you can do it too, but I'm not tuned. And I didn't really look into that too much. Um, if this doesn't work for me, I've got a buddy who's got like the bud system or whatever, so I'm gonna go that route and hopefully get, see if I can get it turned off that way. But hopefully it's all good and uh, just be ready to hit the trail. <laughs> Bad tip in. This is straight ice. Once it goes, I'll be fine. Yeah. getting pepper.
should be much better. A big fillet diff. The RCV Pro 2s. Alright guys, so here she is all wrapped up. As you can see, went the RCV route. Um, I was torn between, so first I'll start off, if you guys don't know, with a Halo 30 you gotta run basically either turners or RCVs because the diff output is so much bigger. Um, this video has been spread apart across multiple days, so I'm not entirely sure um, if we talk about that or not, but you do gotta run bigger axles, which sucks because you gotta buy the money, you know, you gotta buy them, it costs a lot of money, but now the front end should be bomb proof. The only weak link I've got left is the drive shaft, which, um, you know, I've got a spare for now, but I do wanna take care of that sooner than later, for sure. But, went with RCDs, um, I chose them over turners, just basically because, I mean, you know, you guys might not know, but, you know, we've been wheeling for, I don't know, since right out of high school, you know, probably seven, eight years, and RCVs have just always been like the best, you know, I mean, they are the strongest axles on the planet, right? You know, that's their motto, but it's just always been one of those things where, you know, every built rig that you watch on shows and stuff, or a lot of them that you see on like the Jeep shows and everything, like they just RCV axles, but um, other than that, it's, I think it's just, you know, an extra couple hundred bucks to go with RCVs over turners, and I think either choice is great. So, I mean, if, if you're looking to save a few hundred bucks, um, I think a turner is an awesome option as well. Um, I just want RCV just simply because they're supposed to be the best, and uh, that's what I was going for. I spent so much money to get it this far with the front end and with the front diff and everything. I didn't want to have any regrets or wonders or anything like that, but overall, pretty easy install, I'd say. Um, went pretty well, it did fit right in uh, with the gusset kit, which we talked about, but I think that wraps it up guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Um, got some more goods coming for, uh, I don't know, pretty much everybody's rig, I guess. <laughs> um, so we'll just do some update videos, I'm sure, on those and get you guys caught up to speed on where, where Josh's rig sits, Bruiser. Um, I think we're going to do a video on that soon. and then. Maybe a video on Billy's soon. He, he might be changing some things up. So, <laughs> actually, a little sneak peek of Bruiser right here. Oh, oh that's don't get about much. it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get it just from that. <laughs> but, but, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.